Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today on the menu, we're talking about curves, but we're not gonna confine ourselves to one application. I'm not gonna show you how to use curves in Adobe Lightroom Classic, nor am I gonna show you how to use curves in Capture One, nor am I gonna show you how to use curves in Adobe Photoshop. I'm actually gonna show you how to use curves in all of the applications, including other applications, Premiere, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't make a difference. If those applications have a curve adjustment for your tonal values or your your color values, you're gonna learn how to control them. Now, just a few caveats or declarations at the beginning of this video. I'm not gonna show you all the minutia of curves. I've been teaching for 25 years and been a professional retoucher and a photographer for almost, well, actually over 30 years. And I could tell you everything I'm about to show you in this video is pretty much how I and just about the rest of the working world use curves. So I'm gonna start by showing you curves inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. And the reason why is because I think the interface is just a little bit cleaner. Now, in the case of Adobe Lightroom Classic, they do have what I call a training wheel version. We don't want to use that. We're going to click on this white circle here to be in the more traditional interface. Now, once you're looking at this interface, it's common amongst all of the applications. You're looking at a gridded box with a line at about a 45 degree angle. The line represents the current tonal values or the mapping of the tonal values inside of the image. At the very bottom of the line is a point, that point represents pure black. And when I say pure black, I'm referring to pure black as a value of lightness darkness, not necessarily black as a color. Up at the top, you have another point. This point represents pure white. And again, not white as a color, but white as a value of lightness or darkness. From black to white, going up the line, you're going from very dark to mid-tones to very bright information and then all the way at white. You can establish any point that you want to on this line. So the best way to do this or a traditional way to do this is to establish three points, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and one towards the top. Now, with these points, I can now move them up or down. And it's important to understand that anything above the line is going to be bright information and anything below the line is going to be dark information. Now, I have a black and white image uh, open here and it's really easy to see this on a black and white image when you're first learning. So that might be something you wanna start with. I'm just gonna drag this kind of bottom area down. This would be like your shadow adjustments. And then I'm gonna go to my bright information and I'm going to drag it up. This would be like your highlight adjustments. And then the mid-tones, I'm just gonna drag up a little bit more. And I'm gonna click and hold down the eyeball icon here inside of Lightroom Classic, and you could see an immediate improvement here. Also take note the shape of the line. It kind of looks like a little bit of an S, kind of like a sideways S here. Now, this is an S curve, which traditionally an S curve increases contrast. And do take note that the black information is a little bit darker, the bright information is a little bit brighter, and it has an increase in contrast. Now, I can move these points around as much as I want to. And of course you could establish additional points, but it's always recommended to start with three and really work with three as you're moving forward. So just as important as adding points is also knowing how to remove points or reset things. And this is where every application is different. So you're gonna have to take a moment to kind of figure that out. In the case of Lightroom Classic, you hold down Option on the Macintosh keyboard, Alt on the Windows keyboard, you'll get the reset here and you could go ahead and reset the entire interface. You could also right click on the point itself and you could either reset the channel or reset all the channels or just delete that particular point. In the case of something like Capture One, they have a reset for every single panel here. And of course you can right click and remove all or just the selected points. Photoshop's interface is similar. It has a reset down here at the bottom, but also one of my favorite features is you could just rip the point off, just drag it all the way off to the side and it'll just rip the point right off of there. And other applications will have similar features. Usually a right click or a control click is going to give you a removal of either one point or all points. Now, the reason why three points are so important is because not only does it give you more control, but it also locks in the other areas of the curve. If I reset this entire thing, again, I'm back in Lightroom Classic here, and I was just to drag a point and move it down for the shadow area, notice how the whole curve has a bend here. I'm not controlling the mid-tones or the highlights, and that's why it's important to usually have three points. This is not wrong, but it just kind of forces everything to be darker here. Now, if I wanted to bring some points back, I could either click on the line and bring them up, or I could actually click on the grid where I want those points to go, and then the point will establish and pull the line up there. So if you forget to do the points, you could work as you go if you want to, although it's highly recommended recommended to add your points first. Speaking of another point adjustment, never drag your points left to right. Always go up or down when you're making your adjustments. 
Now I've hopped back over into Photoshop because I want to show you an interesting thing that you could do with those top and bottom points. And Photoshop's interface is a little bit better for this, but there are workarounds in the other applications. Most applications, Photoshop obviously here, but Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Capture One, the list goes on, will give you an overlay of the image's histogram or the current histogram here. Now, this histogram is showing you the lightness, darkness values and the, that amount of information in the image. Notice how this image drops off before it touches the left-hand side. This is an indicator that there's not pure black. The image is recording information, but it stops short of the far left-hand side. You have a little bit of a gap here. That's why this image looks a little uh, muddled. It, it doesn't have nice contrast because pure black doesn't exist. Now, in Photoshop, they give you slider arrows down at the bottom that you can actually drag the arrow, which will move the point and drop it over. Now, this does change input values here, and that's fine. This is one of the few instances that dragging things to left or right actually makes a lot of sense. So when I come over to here, what I'm basically saying is pure black doesn't exist over here. Pure black actually exists where the image ends, and now I have that nice black and white crispness, that contrast that we were missing beforehand because pure black didn't exist. Now I can of course come in and establish my points and remap things out as I want to, but that can make things a lot easier when working with your contrast. If I come over to Capture One, Capture One doesn't have the arrows, neither does Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. But at the top and the bottom, I could still move those points around and I still have the histogram. And note in this particular image that the histogram falls short of where pure white is and our subject is wearing a white dress. So to increase that contrast and also establish pure white, I can just click and drag that point. Now the downside of this is it's kind of hard to visualize that lining up of where you're going to move that point. But you do get a little drop down line in some applications, Capture One gives you that here. And I can just have this touch right there. And now you can kind of see a before and an after here. The image gets a little bit brighter. Why? Because I'm actually effectively saying the bright information that should be pure white is now pure white. And therefore the whole image gets a little bit brighter, just like the other image with the Husky gets a little bit darker. Now I've jumped back over to Lightroom Classic because I wanna talk about the side effect of adjusting lightness, darkness, but especially increasing contrast. When you make a significant contrast adjustment, you're also going to see a significant adjustment of saturation or actually a significant increase of saturation. Now I've specifically made a very heavy contrast adjustment here. And I know sometimes people will make a note, oh, you seem to go too far with your contrast. I do that so it's easy to see on a YouTube video. I wouldn't normally do this, but it should be easy to see here, especially when I give you a little bit of a before and now an after on how the color, the blues, and especially the yellows of the grasses in the background have really increased in saturation. This is a natural side effect. Now, every application has a solution for this. Adobe Lightroom Classic has its own particular one that I have done an entire video on, and I've included that link down in the description of this video. Please check that out. But a little bit of a preview of that, down at the very bottom of the curves adjustment layer here, or the curves adjustment panel, I can click this slider and drag it all the way over to the left, and now my saturation has been removed, and I'm back to just having a significant significant amount of contrast. Now, if you're making these adjustments inside of Adobe Photoshop, you have the ability to come into the adjustment layer and change the blending mode from normal to luminosity. When you do that, all that you're doing is having that adjustment do a luminance value or a tonal adjustment. It's only adjusting the darkness, brightness, midtones. It's not doing anything to color. And you can see here now that there is a radical change between having that set to luminosity and not having it set to luminosity. So inside of Capture One, their solution is actually built into the adjustment. Instead of using RGB, if you use Luma, you will get the exact same results and you will not see an increase in saturation. Back over into Adobe Lightroom Classic, I'm going to reset this and let's talk about the additional ways you can manipulate a curve using the color channels. Now, the reason why I like Adobe Lightroom Classic so much, at least from a teaching point of view when it comes to curves, is you can visually see where the line is going to go and what's going to happen to the color. So in the red channel, you have red, above and cyan below. In the green channel, you have green above and magenta below. And in the blue channel, you have blue above and yellow below. So just like you were doing with contrast or luma values or tonal values, kind of the same thing, you could do the same thing with colors here. And before color wheels or color grading existed, this is the way a lot of people color graded images. So let's do it with this particular image. I'm gonna start with the blue channel here. 
So I'm gonna use that three point trick because it works for color as well as contrast and tone. I'm gonna establish my three points here. I'm gonna make my highlights a little bit more yellow and my midtones a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna make my shadow area a little bit cooler, right? And I'll use the eyeball here to give me a little before and an after and I could see that color grade. I like to do the same thing with red except it's gonna be opposite. Start with those three points. And then in this particular case, I'm going to warm up my highlights, add a little bit of red to them, add a little bit of red to my midtones, and then drag that cyan down just a touch. Now, is this going too far? Absolutely. And check out my video again on that Lightroom Classic tutorial on how to easily adjust this and pull this back a little bit. But if you're in programs like Adobe Photoshop and I've already radically color graded this image, you could easily control this by just reducing the opacity down and pulling that adjustment out. Capture One has a similar feature here where you could go ahead and make adjustment layers, doing a new filled adjustment layer. And then you can, of course, repeat the process and do whatever you want to these particular images and have those adjustments and then pull the opacity back. Just about every program has either adjustment layers for this with opacity control, or as I mentioned in Lightroom Classic, a workaround. And that's it. That's controlling tonal values and color grading or adjusting colors inside of any program using a curves adjustment. But there's a few do's and don'ts I wanna make you aware of. First thing to stress is that three point trick, start with three points, stay with three points until you get very comfortable with this. Yeah, there's a lot of tutorials out on YouTube about doing more points or getting more control, and that's great. But if you're just starting from, I don't know anything about curves, stick with three points and you're gonna be a lot happier. Also, avoid at all costs using the target adjustment tool in Photoshop programs, especially Lightroom Classic and Photoshop itself. This is going to be useful at first, but you could actually create a lot of points inside this image by manipulating and adjusting. And the minute you start to create these points, you're gonna end up with some very weird curves and a very weird looking image. Don't use the target adjustment tool in Lightroom Classic and don't use the target adjustment tool inside of Adobe Photoshop. They're both going to create probably more points than you want to handle. Speaking of those three points, always move them up or down and also never make an adjustment where the line touches any side of the particular box. The minute you do that, you're going to get something that looks like this, which could be very cool if you need some sort of sci-fi predator infrared look. But overall, for most images, you don't want to do that. So don't let the curve flatten out against any side of the actual adjustment area. The next piece of advice is take advantage of adjustment layers and blending modes if they exist in that particular program. Photoshop is a great example of this. I've already created an S curve for my contrast here. I'm gonna rename it and I'm just gonna call it contrast. And then I'm gonna set the blending mode to luminosity. And then I'm gonna create another curves adjustment layer here. And I'm gonna come in and I'll do a very, very, very quick adjustment here to the highlights and the midtones and the shadows, similar kind of color grade. I'll go into red, I'll repeat the process here. And I'll go ahead and rename this to color grade. And the blending mode for this is going to be set to color. So now you've separated contrast from color adjustments. And by the way, you could do that color blending mode for any color adjustment, not just curves. But by doing this, you've separated contrast from color. You're having the blending modes only allow those adjustments to impact the areas that you want to use. And you also have separate control over them using the opacity slider. If you're using Capture One, just create a second adjustment, do everything in Luma first, and then do your color grading in another adjustment layer. And you will have essentially the same thing. Unfortunately, Premiere doesn't give you that particular thing. They do give you adjustments that you could use, but you don't get any control over the blending modes. That's the reason why so many people will do this type of work in a program like Adobe After Effects, where you get those exact same controls. Unfortunately, you don't have that feature built into Adobe Lightroom Classic, but hey, have I mentioned that I've done a video on this particular topic? Check it out because you do. It's just a little bit of a workaround. My next piece of advice deals with the beginning and ending points. If you're looking to create something that has a little bit more of a stylized look, you can move those beginning points up and down. Now, we already talked about moving them for contrast, but if I move my black point up a little bit, what I'm essentially doing is I'm pulling out dark information out of the image. This will create that kind of faded weather look, low contrast. You could do the same thing by dragging white down as well, and it will basically reverse contrast there. And you could still end up with an S curve in the middle, but what you're doing is you're kind of limiting those extreme ends. So you can have contrast, but you can have that more stylized look by moving those beginning and end points. 
And my last tip with using curve adjustments, because these points can be so difficult to fine tune later on, my biggest piece of advice is over adjust. For both color grade here and contrast, I have done an excessive amount of adjustment, but this gives you two advantages. Number one, it's easy to see where that adjustment happens, both in contrast and then also with the color grade. And of course, I've separated them into two different layers and turned the perspective blending modes on. But by having these excessive adjustments, it's easy to see where these adjustments are going to happen in the particular image. And if I want to just lower those values, I just use the opacity slider in the program that I'm using and I could just pull this information out. The benefit of that is, is if all of a sudden I or a client decide, oh, I wish it was a little bit more contrasty or I wish you could add a little bit more contrast because I'm still not sure if contrasty is an actual word, you can increase your opacity here and bring some of that contrast back without having to come in and move any points around. So over adjustment, separate layers gives you a lot of control when you work in the opacity sliders. So that wraps up our crash course and curves. Again, there's more that can be done, but I'm not gonna lie to you, very few people ever take it past this particular point. If you wanna be effective with curves, you now have all, all of that information. Just make sure that you check out the particular application that you're using, getting rid of points, possibilities as far as blending modes, layers, controls. If you have any questions, of course, post those in the comments section down below, and hopefully you will now like curves enough that you will start to use them. Hey, speaking of like, I hope you've liked this video. If so, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. If you already have, great. Thank you so much. If not, please hit subscribe and subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other content that we have, including that Lightroom classic curve adjustment tutorial I keep mentioning. And of course, please share this with anybody who's maybe struggling with curves a little bit. This will certainly improve their experience with curves and reduce the stress. And until next time, I'm MD Welch. This is Photo Kitchen wishing you all the best. Take care.